So here is my canvas in Obsidian. If you don't know what a canvas is, in a nutshell, it's like a mind mapping tool. And if you want to know more, I have a video dedicated to this, so check that out. I prefer to use canvas uh, in conjunction with writing out an MOC. Now, as you see here, I have a note here opened on my canvas titled, how can I hold two opposing ideas at the same time and function MOC? All right, so the topic I've chosen from a map of content is this question. And this question is one of my 12 favorite questions that I carry with me in life. If you don't know what I'm talking about here, check out this video where I talk through the 12 favorite problems. It originates from Richard Feynman, the Nobel winning physicist. But anyway, so that's the topic for me. And I did an MOC, um, that's just, you know, a regular note, word-based think through of the rabbit holes that lead me to what I think about this question. I did a detailed video here if you want to check that out. But as a very visual person, writing things out linearly actually makes me feel really confused because I feel like there are different concepts I'm dropping down. There are different levels or maybe scope that I'm looking at these concepts. I don't really understand what exactly I'm trying to think about. And so what I do is, as you see here, I outlined the con concepts uh, in my word MOC. So basically these uh, titles, these headings right here, I've put them out into a concepts box. And now I want to really spatially and visually move them around to understand what are actually the connections between the different uh, concepts that answer the question, how can I hold two opposing ideas at the same time and function? All right, so let's take these concepts and forget about what we wrote in the text MOC and just look at them and see, you know, how should we order these things? The first thing that stood out to me was scientific thinking is one way of thinking. So that definitely goes under ways of thinking. Creativity, mm, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's a way, is it a way of thinking? I'm not sure. Um, so let's just put that there for now. Insights, uh, definitely I feel like this creativity gets you insights. Uh, ways of thinking, scientific thinking, probably all gets you insights, okay? So we link those two together. And we probably have some sort of um, intelligence contributing to the insights. Why did that disappear? Here we go. And then the paradox, uh, where would I put that? Well, apparently, you know, intelligence is what attributes to paradox, uh, according to this quote here from F. Scott Fitzgerald, that the test of a first rate intelligence is the ability to hold two opposing ideas in mind and still retain the ability to function. Okay. So to me then, um, also paradox creates insights, right? Because they don't seem to work together, yet there is something underneath. Because if we look at this quote here from Richard Feynman, the paradox is only a conflict between reality and your feelings of what reality ought to be, right? So this is actually an opportunity, a hint um, to find new insights. Uh, what else is there? Um, creativity, whether, you know, that's creativity is a necessity to generating insights. I don't know. You don't do you need to be creative to hold two things that oppose each other in your mind, you definitely need to be a little bit more flexible, right? Um, Open-minded, which was uh, what this idea on scientific thinking is about. So let's, oops, let's drag that out here. And whether here's an interesting thing, if creativity is necessary to generate insights, right? Is there a relationship between intelligence and creativity? Is there a relationship here? Right, maybe, being creative is intelligent or the other way around. I don't know, right? Because traditionally we've thought that, okay, if you're a STEM background, right? And you're very logical and you're able to think through problems. This is definitely an example of intelligence. Whereas if we think about it through this lens of the paradox of things that oppose each other, you know, what leads to intelligence? And probably it's a good place actually to think about why F. Scott Fitzgerald said this is actually a test for first-rate intelligence. What does he mean by that? Uh, I'm not so sure. So all of a sudden, there are new insights that come out of being able to spatially 
uh, move these concepts around. Now I see that maybe there's something creativity and intelligence. Whoops, my face is blocking this, but right, maybe creativity and intelligence are closer, closely linked or more closely linked than we think, right? Uh, maybe be having an insight is more closely linked to creativity as well as intelligence. And then maybe scientific thinking is actually a lot closer to creativity uh, than we think. Maybe, I don't know. It's, is that true or not? I don't know. But by just moving these concepts just spatially and looking at how they may or may not relate to each other, uh, to me, it's very interesting. And so this is a very alternative way to doing a map of content. Uh, and it is to take what you have already written in note form, which I, or, oops, sorry, which I have uh, in this uh, word note format and now really processing it through a different way of thinking, right? Actually, I mentioned this uh, about divergent thinking and convergent thinking, right? If the word linear way of writing the MOC is a di convergent way of thinking about this, uh, this mind map type of spatial thinking is more com divergent, right? We're just trying to see what's related to each other, what's not, like where are we in terms of scope and how do things relate to each other? So if you found this helpful, and you're curious about more maps of content MOC, uh, check out this video I did. It's a more comprehensive overview of MOC as a thinking tool and as a organizational tool. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.